I got to tell you, this has got to be one of the craziest things we have ever done on video. What do I mean by that? Well, today we're going to be taking a look at a vertical GPU mount and a PCI Express 4.0 riser cable, two of each. Why is that? This is not for the purpose of a vertical GPU mount, but, but the technology that mounts a GPU vertically is what we're going to use so we can do the next video, which is what this is really about, because this video is about staging for the next video coming up. So I don't know how many are going to watch this and will be disappointed, but what we're going to do is take a look at two vertical GPU mounts. And a GPU mount really has, uh, to mount vertical, two purposes. Number one, most people mount one of those, say for aesthetics. Number two, a lot of people will mount those uh, for, for the issues of heat. I've got to tell you, if you've got an RTX 3090, I want to show that off. Which brings us now to this point, that we're not about trying to show this off for an M.2 card, but we need to show an emissivity test, where we're going to do a speed and a heat test. And for the heat test, we've got to get that card up and out of that machine. So where it's in the machine, we've got to get it up and out, so we're in the same plane with the camera, so as we're looking down on it, we can look through there and see what kind of heat we get. I'd also like the ability to flip the card on the other side and see what kind of heat we get off the PCB. We're going to see. If this is successful, as I said, we look at two mounts, and we'll talk about the pros and cons. But as we look at these two mounts, only one mount's going to do the job, and I think it'll become self-apparent. So the first one we're going to get out, we're going to look at a Cooler Master, and then we're going to look at another mount by MNPC Tech. And i got to tell you, for our purpose, the mount from MNPC Tech is the one that's going to do the job, and I think it'll become self-apparent. Because, you know, we always talk about thinking outside the box and, you know, change one thing changes everything because details matter. Well, this is one of those little details, kind of like yellow post-it notepads. I wish I'd have been the guy that had thought about it. But the way this is going to mount, I think it's, well, let's take a look. Let's start with the unboxing. So the first box we've got is going to have a cable, and it's going to have a mount. In fact, this particular mount from Cooler Master has a cable attached to it. The problem is it's PCI Express 3. What we need is a cable for PCI Express 4. Now, as we get these out and as we do this test, uh, we're going to have two tests we're going to look at. Let's go overhead and go ahead and start pulling this thing out. Got to slice that box open. Several of you have told me you like to see the unboxings, so that's what we're going to do. Now, I've also got an additional cable in here, and the two cables we're going to look at will be one from Look, which I believe is a Swedish company, and the other is from LinkUp. And it's interesting how these cables are used for either a mini ITX build or for a regular build. Okay, here's one of the cables. Look. The cable is cobalt. Look has a special case for many ITX builds, and that's what this cable is for. Uh, my concern is I don't know if the cable is going to be long enough based on our needs. For their needs, for what they do in their case, it may be fabulous. But looking at the technology and the way the, ca the uh, cable is designed, that's what got my attention. So we're going to see how well it works for our purpose. But what I like about the mount that's in the box, this is probably one of the most complete mounts, and I like the way it's set up, and I did quite a bit of research on this. This by Cooler Master, it'll become self-apparent, but the way it sets up, it occupies seven slots. Now the problem with that, because it occupies seven slots, anything that we have in the case is going to be a problem because we're only going to have that one thing we can see. And since this is designed for a GPU, um, that's going to be kind of a mixed bag problem for us because of that area for seven slots, We've got to have a GPU, but we've got to have the M.2, and if it occupies the space of seven slots, that kind of leaves us SOL. But I want to show it to look at space relations and the depth we're dealing with, because we've also, by chance, looked at a couple of cases that also deal with that issue, where the case is thicker, and the space above where you normally mount your I.O. cards, there's an area there. The biggest I've seen is 2.75 slots wide, where you can mount a GPU vertically. And of the two cases in the list we've had, I'll put a link up in this description, uh, a case like that is appropriate for a GPU. Might even work for what we're going to do because we want to test to compare the ASUS HyperQuad M.2 versus the Gigabyte Aorus M.2. See what the difference is uh, beyond the obvious, which we'll go through. But that's what this is about staging. So as we look at this, there is a cable on this. But to reiterate, that cable is PCI Express 3.0. So I'm going to get this out of the box. And we'll see how this sets up. You know, i got to make a comment right quick. This, this is just a function of a case, and it has an I.O. cable with it. And no, I don't have gloves on yet. But there's a seal on the box. Why can't they do that with motherboards, considering especially what they cost? So we're going to open that seal. Shows that nobody's been into it. 
There are several mounts of this style. There were about three that I really liked. Lee and Lee had one that comes to mind. But uh, my concern was I wanted something more generic and this one is. And depending on your setup, may or may not solve what you need. But it'll become apparent once I get this out of the box how this is going to work. Okay, we've got screws. Thumb screws, I like that. Set those aside. We have the mount. And then we have the cable. And the cable is separate. I was afraid that cable was already mounted. The ribbon connect is the problem with PCI Express 4.0. It's not such a big deal with PCI Express 3. What's going to happen is if the, uh, the PCI Express 4 cable that we've got doesn't work, we'll either see a BSOD or we'll see a BSOD. And in which case, even AMD, and I've got some links I'll put up in a few minutes that if I don't, whatever I don't share with you, I'll have in the description. And even AMD has mentioned, if you use any kind of a riser cable, uh, the problem may be that you have to slow the bus down to PCI Express 3 for that to work. Now, 3M seems to be on top of the technology for a cable, so I would expect them to come out with a new one. And the significance of this is we are on the cusp of PCI Express 5 and PCI Express 6.0. So this cable is going to become more critical for people who want to do this. And for those who have been doing this for a long time, hats off to you. I've, I've never considered this anything as a, a part of function. I'm always about function first, form second. But everyone that's done this has always been about uh, form. Again, number one for aesthetics. And, and again, to reiterate, number two for heat. And uh, I'm concerned about heat, but I'm concerned about the mount. Now, as we look at this, the way this works, go back overhead. You know, the picture can only do so much, but as we wrote this around and take a look at it, when you're dealing with an RTX 3090, you've got a card that's probably going to be about, here's what it looked like on the back of the case. You've got a card that's probably going to be three and a half slots wide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this can accommodate seven slots based on that configuration. Now the way this goes is if you look at this, the video card sits right in here next to this. And if I were to use this, I would demonstrate this with the one we have in the system, which is an RTX 2080 Ti, which is two slots wide. Still gives me access because remember, we're on the Gigabyte TRX40 designated motherboard. So we have two 16 lane slots and we have two eight lane slots. I can still get to the eight lane slot. Okay, this will accommodate that in that space. Even though it takes seven slots this way, what we're dealing with is the height as we go down into the machine because the GPU has been taken from, from this position, which is this way. We're taking the GPU from this position and we've got to turn it in this position. So by doing that, there's, there's a height allocation we have to allow for and that allocation of height is where that GPU is going to sit. So this space here will accommodate a GPU that had been this way, this way, and it will set about two slots deep. Okay, this space below is what we have to go down into the case with, which means in that area of seven, as we look, if you'll notice, that covers the two 16-lane slots and covers the eight-lane slots, which makes it pretty much SOL for anything else. So if you're just running a GPU, no big deal. If you're running an M.2, that's a very big deal. And if the M.2, which is one slot wide, is what we're trying to get up and maneuver and manipulate, that's not going to work. Okay, so that's what that one can do. And uh, it's, it's, it's well designed, designed by Cooler Master. It's heavy, thick metal, and I would trust any video card that was set on this. It also has the slide capability so you can extend support. But all the support is based on the two screws that as this sits down, it works over those seven. So this will work in any case, but it won't work in our case for our situation. So I don't want to spend too much time on it other than to say, you know, the drawings they do are fine, but the way they work, this is all about function. So if you need a mount like that, you have to think about and consider for a GPU, fine. Okay, the cable we're going to get to, this is look, we'll get to that in a minute. Now this is the mount that I'm excited about, and this is one from MNPC Tech. This comes out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now, I'm going to put up some links to share with you to show you what they've got. Uh, just basically, there's two different mounts, one that works with a two-slot wide video card, one that'll work with, I believe, uh, well, they say an RTX 3090, and I, and I believe that's a Founders Edition RTX 3090. I'll have to check the link, which means that too would have to be two slots wide. But I'll put up the links because the one we have is not made for an RTX 3090. So this will work with a card that's two slots wide, but I think the one, if my memory serves me correctly, is supposed to work with a card that's three slots wide. Well, all the Founders Editions I'm aware of are 
blower style two slot wide cards. But if it's a three slot wide card, they have a mount for it. Now, there's two configurations. One where you have, and I'll show you how this works in a minute, but you have the case and you have the mount and there's intimate contact. Okay, in this package, the mount, instead of being an intimate contact, has spacers, has feet that keeps it up off whatever it's supposed to have contact with. The reason being, which will become apparent, which I'll, which I'll share with you in the next step, is once we get this out and assemble this, how we can mount this is phenomenal. But because of some of the things we've made decisions on, you know, one thing changes everything. There's a couple of places where, well, actually, there's one place I could not use this mount, but I have three other places that I can use this mount. So when I get this out, that becomes apparent. So MNPC Tech, let's get this out and see what we've got. And this, too, is something that's difficult to see just by uh, looking at the pictures. And when I was searching for mounts, this was not the first, second, or third thing that I came up looking for mounts. And when I stumbled into it, I said, wow. I wish I'd have been the guy that had uh, invented that. And then when I saw and understood, and after doing some research for a couple hours, then I realized this thing is absolutely genius. Because what we have is a mount, and the way this mount works, I'll take the plastic off in just a minute, but I've got two keepers here. There's a front and a back. There's holes that go through it, and then these four standoffs. Pretty simple. A big piece of machined aluminum with two thumb screws, for the video card to sit in here, and then these standoffs. I want to show you some links. Now the mount we're going to take a look at from MNPC Tech. This one is called the MNPC Tech Stage 2 Vertical Video Card GPU Mounting Bracket. So you get an idea what it looks like looking at the mount, two thumb screws, the four standoffs, and if you notice the mounting holes, that's the mounting holes for a 120 millimeter fan. That means anywhere in the case where I could normally mount a 120 millimeter fan, if I've got enough distance out, I can put that in lots of places without having to drill anything on the case. Now, the reason for the standoffs, if, if this was for a GPU, I would be able to separate that out and not have to drill through for the uh, HDMI or DisplayPort, whatever I'm using, mini DisplayPort. But I don't need that capability for an M.2 card. The back of an M.2 card has possibly two things. One, the LEDs to be able to see. Number two, a fan which is not on the Aorus, but is on the uh, ASUS M.2. So for my purpose with the standoffs, without that having intimate contact to the case, it gives me capability to go either way. Because if I don't use the standoffs, I can have intimate contact. If I do use the standoffs, I've got a little more distance because I'm concerned about the length of the cable reaching this. Now, the only thing that's going to be the problem or the hindrance, because I think this is the perfect mount, is going to be the cable. And the question is, this look cable or the uplink cable? I think the look cable is going to be too short, but we're going to, yeah, we're going to look at it. And of the mounts, this being the one that we have, this mount right now is in stock and has been in stock. But the other mount that is specific to an RTX 3090, this is the Stage 2 RTX 3090 FE vertical triple PCI slot. Okay. I had that wrong. That's made for a three-slot GPU. So for a three-slot GPU, specifically a 3090 FE. I'm telling you about this. It's sold out. I've been trying to get my hands on that particular mount. And uh, as soon as I received delivery on this, while I was kind of waiting, because I was in hopes the other one would become available, I got the notice within three hours, I went to order this other mount that I'm showing you right now, and it was gone again. So this mount even though they don't sell it on Amazon or any place else, you can only buy it from their website, is a big deal. You're, you're probably familiar with MNPC Tech from uh, some of the mounts they have for, uh, say you've got a GPU that sags. Well, MNPC Tech is one of the mounts that helps solve that problem. And that too is available on their website with a whole bunch of other stuff. You want to spend some time looking and, and browsing through that. But even though this is a heavy piece of machined aluminum, uh, you can get it in the black finish, which is what we have, or in the natural aluminum. At the time I ordered this, I wanted just the aluminum because I thought it would show it better in here. Couldn't get it. So I'm thankful I got what I got. And I couldn't get this other mount I'm telling you about. So you're going to have to watch it and uh, do what you got to do. This is not for a permanent installation. Our purpose is for testing. Our purpose for what we're showing you is the staging for the next video. So the mount will succeed. My concern is if the cable is going to work, if it has enough length. I read another article, and I, and I don't remember if it's Reddit, and I'm not sure if I've got it in the link. 
Jesus, and I think it was a misprint, said that the cable could be as long coming off the bus as 15 meters. Well, that's impossible. I think what they meant was like 15 millimeters. So we're going to see if the cable we've got is too long. What's going to happen? We'll do two tests. One, we'll see if we can boot the computer because the M.2 card has Windows. It's an array configuration. If we BSOD, that stops. If we don't BSOD, then the next step is going to be to run the test for the speed. If the speed test succeeds of the tests we've run in the past, then we're in business. But if it fails, again, it's because of the cable. And one way we can verify that is go into the BIOS, change it down to PCI Express 3, and see if it'll succeed that way. So if that all works, that next video is going to be about that heat and speed test. But this, I wish I'd have been the guy that invented this. So what I need to do is go ahead and get my gloves on and get suited up so we can take a look at this in the right way. Because I'm going to need to pull the card and I'm going to need to pull the uh, bracket out. In fact, let's go ahead and get this out of the package right now. See what we got. Get rid of that shiny plastic. Get rid of that reflection. Sorry about that. So there's our four little mounts. We'll pull those out. And those are machined as well. Wow. Give ourselves a little contrast here so we can look at this. So there's our mount. I'm kind of surprised the screws they used on these. These are straight through. These are not threaded. But I'm kind of surprised they didn't use a special screw with uh, thumb screw nuts on them. They're just, a, they're just standard. But that would have been a more expensive screw to have that type of screw with a thumb nut of that length. It's interesting sometimes doing these videos of things that we want to show what it takes to uh, bring that to fruition. Okay, let's go back. Okay, here's our mount. It's got a nice chamfer on the edge on this side. And this side does not have a chamfer on the edge. It's a little bit rougher machining, which would indicate this would be the inside or the side that would go with these mounts. And because of the way this is designed, this has to be put all the way through. In other words, I have to line this up. And this as well, these are chamfered on one edge, but not chamfered here. So I can see that's going to have to line up. And then the screws put through to hook that in. So we're going to have to get the... Uh, that's going to be awkward. I, I wish they had made these separate where we screwed into both ends. But I, but I get what they did to keep the price down because already this is not an inexpensive piece of aluminum. But i got to tell you it's impressive. So because of the way that's going to mount, we're going to mount. And you notice this also has a little bit of a groove. And, it, and right here on the bottom, you can tell which side is which. We've got that little groove machine right in there. So that's what, that way when the card slides in, you know you're on the correct side. This is really, really well made. And two thumb screws. And they're looking down, you can see that slot right down through there. Okay, so we're going to need to get that card out. And we got one more cable to do. Now, I don't expect the look cable to be long enough. I don't remember the length. I'll put up a link to it. The cables and the, uh, the one mount was able to be uh, acquired from uh, Amazon, but this, this key mount from MNPC Tech only from their website. Okay, now that we're all suited up, I've got to make sure the machine is off. Yep, power's drained. Disconnect. And now we've got to pull the card. It's interesting, while we're waiting on the WRX80 motherboards, it's um, still lots of stuff to do and talk about. I will say Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, we're working on that too. Okay, this is the M.2 card. It came with the motherboard, so this is PCI Express 4.0. And we are going to mount that card. So I'm going to put my table back up here right quick so that we kind of have a work surface. And this will become apparent once we put this in here, how this is going to sit. That is ingenious. Show that overhead. Now if you notice, a little slot right down there. And this is the chamfered side. The edges are chamfered. So as that sits right in there, and locks right in. It floats freely on the bottom. The only thing that keeps it positioned is the top. Now, if we were dealing with a video card, it was two slots wide, it gains stability because there's nothing that, there's nothing that locks that in on the bottom. It floats. So we're going to have a little bit of play. The only thing that's going to hold it down is going to be this screw on the top. So we're going to have some wiggle. But again, this is not a permanent installation. Only one thumb screw. I went for this one. And again, there's nothing I need to see, but I'm going to use the standoffs because it's about the length of the cable. That's pretty neat. That is really, really neat. I ought to put a GPU on that just to see how it looks, but that means i got to pull it out. But 
I want to stay focused on what we're doing. We, we might again later. I don't look as anything we do as a one-shot item. There's always opportunities for other things. For example, if we build one of the workstations into one of those humongous cases we've got that allows for a vertical GPU mount, for grins, we might do that. Okay, now here's where things get interesting. The question becomes, where are we going to mount this? Now, I've got a place for fans in the top. I've got a place in the front where I can also mount fans right down in here. The question is, what's going to be the best the best use of space and the ideal first space of course would be right here at that rear because this rear fan is a problem because we use the Noctua so we can't use that there's no way we can get clearance over that and all we need to be able to do is to be able to see this from both sides now this side we're going to see the heat sink this side we don't see the PCB again we've got this aluminum cover so we're going to we're going to try it but because it's it's separated from the uh, PCB, I don't think we'd get an accurate heat reading, but we're going to look. But the point is, there's no way to position that above that without some extra something holding us on the back. Now, if I took this rear fan off, I could position where those two screw holes are at and use something to support it and prop it up because it's temporary. But I want to be able to mount it where I can keep it. So my one inclination might be to put it to the front. I'm not lined up where the holes are at. And I'm looking to see if I can. And I am right up next to the fan, the secondary fan. So I'd have to take off that secondary fan. The other option would be to the bottom. And I can't turn it the way I need because of the video card. Even if the video card was in the primary slot and not the secondary 16 lane slot. Because there's, there's just physically not enough space. And if I turn it this way, again I don't have enough space. I barely, I'm barely behind it. And that's not going to work. So my next option would be if I can put it to the front and I've got the same problem. There's no way physically in this case I can put it. Now, the other option would be this right over here. If I were to remove this drive cage, that would give me enough space right there where I could mount that. The problem is the cable has to reach from here to here or from here to there. And I don't think the cable is going to do that. The closest I can get would be if I put it in between right off the top of the video card so that I can mount it. But again, I'm not gaining enough on the cable to reach either one of these. Now I can put the video card back in the first 16 lane slot, but I have it in the second 16 lane slot because we were trying to work through the D4 error, that parent-child relationship with the video card and the uh, Thunderbolt 3 card, which we've now solved. The reason I'm telling you all this is yes, I can put it back, but I'm leaving it here for some of the other tests. My problem is still that the case does not give me enough space to do what we're talking about. So if that's the case, or if that's the situation, are we better off trying to figure out some way to support this across the top? That's the shortest distance to uh, where the cable needs to plug in. And if we can just literally set the card up here and support it temporarily, because we're not getting any strength and the weight we're putting on the card puts a stress on the connector. So yes, it's gonna sag without an additional bracket, but this is so we can get a heat and speed test. This at least would hold the card, even if we don't do anything, we just let it sit here. And I can put a spacer right here to keep the card up if this will turn on, and that will give me the same plane. So not a permanent installation. This mount is not going to work because of this case. There's just not enough space. I would have to take out the, uh, and I cannot take the front top out, but I can take the front bottom cage out. Because this cage is part of the case. I'd have, to, I'd have to break it loose. And this cage is one of the reasons for this case that made this a valuable case. So we do our hot swap, hot plug. But this I can remove, but I don't get, I don't get what I need for connectivity because with, with this setting this way, that puts the connector on that side. Ideally, the connector needs to be on this side, which puts us in a situation where we have the, ca the card supported on this side with this bracket. And all we need to do is support it on this side with something, which literally means all we need is to keep the card supported and isolate it. So I think this is a great idea, but it, uh, in this particular case that we've uh, talked about extensively, this bracket's not going to work for us. And the primary reason we need to get this up and out so we can test for heat. So let's take a look at the cable now and see what kind of issues we've got with that, knowing where that sits. I'll just set that aside. That's a great idea. You know, not everything we do... Uh, 
is always successful. But you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Okay, this should be the uh, this should be the link up cable. Oh, and something else I got to add while I'm at it. We have we have the ASUS Thunderbolt 4 card with a 13, excuse me, with a 14 minus 1 pin header on it. So, something else shadow things to come. Yep. That's the link up cable. And this is probably going to be the preferred cable. This particular cable is the same one that MNPC Tech has up on their website. Uh, it's also available on Amazon. It's easy to find. I believe this is based on a 3M cable. So if you want to look that up, I've got some links I'll share with you as well. But let's pull this out, see how long it is, and uh, see if it'll work. Now this box is not sealed. It's just an interconnect. But Q code, Q code, everybody's about their Q codes. Okay, there's our cable. And this is sealed in a bag, which is nice. Let's get the look cable out. Now the look cable is sealed in plastic. Heat shrink, heat shrink wrap. Let's see what the inner package looks like. You know, you can talk about this stuff all day long, but you don't know it until you actually get your hands on it. And a sealed, sealed box for the cable. So that's the look cable. And that's made specifically for their ITX cases. I was fascinated by the cable that got my attention because with separate wires, that's all separate. But I'm, I'm fairly curious about the link up. This is called a link up Ultra PCI 4.0. You know, I really thought that when we left parallel ATA behind, that we were through with cables like that. I know we still have SATA 3 cables, but still, we have not had an issue with the length of the SATA 3 cables. In fact, a lot of times, the SATA cables are too long. But uh, to get into something like this, this is a, this is a heavy duty cable. And specifically, it doesn't show it very well on the camera. Let's go in for a little bit of close-up. Apparently, we have one, two, three, four for data and one for power. That's a different type of a ribbon cable right there, which uh, exemplifies what we see in the look cable. So I'm going to get this look cable out of the bag see what we've got. Now, as we hold the two cables out and look at them, the way they're connected, I like the manufacturing process on both on this end. When I say this end, the business end, the link up cable has a protective cover on both ends, which I appreciate. The look cable has the ribbon connect like you would normally expect, which on this cable would be right there. This is supposed to set up like this. So you have to pay attention to which cable you're getting for the particular service you're trying to achieve. And our, and our power here on this one is back to back, whereas this one has the power out side to side. But all these are individual cables. That's why these are so expensive getting this interconnect done. And this end has poly wrapped on it to protect it, which I'm going to take off and take a look. You can tell this had a lot of, a lot of work that went into it. And once that's exposed, it's exposed. See, I like the fact these have covers, whereas this, they've done this. So this is not a mass produced cable like this is a mass produced cable. The question is, which one's going to give the signal integrity? Now, based on what I ordered and based on length, this is what I want to find out what we've got. And based on length, roughly both are the same. And I'll put up links to these cables that give the links. So both of these are PCI Express 4.0. Both of these are roughly the same length. I was concerned the look cable would be too short, but it looks like they're both the same length. So if length's an issue, length's an issue. And as far as that, what I read about 15 millimeters, Let's see how our distance works. So the next thing to do, because I need to keep this one protected, I can use, for checking distance, I can use the link up cable to check that because I don't want to get that contaminated. But I want us to take a look at the length. So we verified that. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So in terms of the cable length, what we're looking at, because of the bus, the connector for the card, the notch on this end, which means the cable goes this way, so the notch is going to sit down that way, and as that sits down in there, there's not enough room to bring that up and out anywhere except right here, because the notch that's on this end stays on this end. So for that to work this way, this notch would work this way. So this verifies I got the correct cable to, to lay it this way, but there's not enough length in the cable, even if the bracket worked, to get the cable any further out than right here. So this is something I've never done before, and I wanted you guys to see it in case anybody else is uh, adventurous enough so you don't have to waste your time and money. I don't know how many people will watch this because this is not about a GPU. It's about an M.2. But we can put that in, and then all we have to do is support the card. This is a temporary installation for heat. 
And even if I leave that mounted, which I probably won't, but if I did, I need that this way. And that is exactly what that would do for me. So all I need to do, and I can have that resting in the case, since the notch and the notch are right here, this area right here, where the Thunderbolt card and the video card give me just enough for the bracket for this surface to rest, then all I'll need to do is support this end with something that'll support that up. And that should not be that big of a problem with something like, something like that. So the video card I'm not touching because I have the EVGA power brick right here that wraps around for the RTX 2080 Ti. And I'm not going to attach this to the case. And this box should be giving me just enough height. Yeah, expensive box, right? With the look cable. So I can mount this right here. Just let it sit. And with this supported this way and that way, and centered over those cards, I should be able to connect to the bus on the motherboard and connect the card to the bus right here. And that should have us in business. So the next step, I'm going to try it. See if I can turn the machine on. See if we get a BSOD. If this works, then the next test, heat and speed. If this does not work, then I'm going to have to keep looking for a way to get this done. Because I've got to be able to get this up where the camera can see. So, wish me luck. So we're going to pull off that protective sleeve. I like the way that's made. That's interesting. We'll set that aside because we're going to need it later. I was really stoked about this mount when I found it. I thought, man, what a neat idea. But it's not the first neat idea I've had that didn't work out. Okay, we get a good connection with the bus. That end is in. Now we'll grab the M.2 card. We'll get it up in here. So we're connected on that end. We're sitting right here real pretty. And this has got to come underneath so we can mount and connect. And that even has a little bit of a lock, it looks like. Curious. And that'll just slide right in there. And then that lock can be pushed into lock down, which I'm not going to do. And there's an edge connector there to protect that so you can still go back into whatever. I like the way that cable's made. So this just has to sit down and it has enough push on it because it's pushing the card that way. So I don't, I don't have to worry about it coming back this way. So we'll put the box back under here to keep that elevated off the video card. And we're going to see this is precarious. I've never done anything like this. But we should not have anything uh, at risk. So I'm ready now as, uh, as we like to say to do the smoke test and see how this uh, is going to work. A lot of work for a uh, heat and speed test. So we're going to plug it in. We'll turn on power. Now, if this power is up, the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll go to the computer and uh, look at the BIOS, make sure we see the card, and then we'll reboot, go into Windows, and see if it boots up. Keep our fingers crossed, because what we're trying to find out is, uh, no, we weren't able to use the mount like we needed, but this mount serves the purpose for what we want to do. We may use it in another build, and I'll be looking at this with other cases to do some other things, but uh, I never look at anything as, as one item. So we are, uh, power's plugged in, power supply's turned on, all I need to do is energize. Voila. Okay. Fan is powered on. The question is, is it going to boot? Or will we have to go into the BIOS and change this from PCI Express 4 to PCI Express 3? Now, if you notice right here, we can also see the BIOS code. So if we have any kind of issues or errors, that'll also show up. It posted. We're going into the BIOS. As soon as I see it on screen, bingo. Now, that's just fantastic. So what I want to do is go over here and take a look at boot. Windows Boot Manager AMD RAID. So let's go look at settings, IO ports. We are in PCI Express by 16 underscore one. Slots bifurcated for the uh, bootable RAID. We're going to take a look at the RAID Expert utility, controller management. We're going to rescan disks and we see our four drives 2468, PCI Express generation 4x4, four four, 2 terabyte, all online. Array 1, RAID 0, 7.9 terabytes normal. Well, so far that's outstanding. So the mount didn't do exactly like what we wanted, but it does what we need. The cable works, and we didn't try the uh, look cable yet, although I would like to and compare. I'll do the same thing, but uh, so far this, uh, this link-up cable works. Now, the real test is, the real kicker is, can we get into Windows? Because remember, this is about a heat and speed test on the M.2 card. So I'm going to save the BIOS. We'll let it boot. Go into Windows. We'll see if it gets that far. So we will press F10, save and exit. We haven't done anything. Well, let's go to Windows. And as soon as that comes up, I'll let you know we hear a post. So again, we can see the, uh, the BIOS codes over here. 
And we can also see the fans running. I hear the fans in front kicking in. There's the post. I heard the beep. So we are now booting. Yes. We are at the point now where we're going to go into Windows. Let's see if this works without a BSOD. There's the dial coming up for Windows. So one, we were in the BIOS successfully. We saw it. We're still PCI Express 4. Number two, we're going to boot into Windows. If that works successfully, then number three, we'll try the test. It'll be the same test we've been using. And that will be the results to see if this cable works. And for grins, I'll try it on the other cable. And there we are coming up. And boom, we're into Windows. PCI Express 4.0. And that cable works. All right. We'll give it a minute to finish booting. Let's go ahead and call up the test. Crystal disk mark. We have to remember, we are on, first of all, this is the C drive. And we are on, yeah, we want to make sure that's set correctly. We're on 8 gigabytes because we're at 8 terabytes. So we'll flush the cache. Let's, uh, let's run the test and see what we get. See if we can do this without a BSOD. So what will be different between this test and the next will be strictly heat and speed. I'll probably put the screen up where we have four different screens like we've done before. So one, you can see this test. Two, you can also see the camera, which I'm going to try to show a little bit differently. And uh, you'll also be able to see this as well as possibly uh, some other information. And I'll explain the test as we go. It should be fairly quick. This was the big deal, getting the staging set. And I'm not taking this off the screen just in case there's a BSOD. I want to see if this is going to work. And we're not doing this with the GPU. We're doing this with the M.2 card. And this is the Gigabyte Aorus M.2 quad card. And that is four Sabrent 2 terabyte drives on there. PCI Express 4.0. And I believe those are the first generation drives. So first generation drives means they should be at about 5,000 megabytes per second each. So 5, 10, 15, 20. And right now we're at 14, 799. I expect some overhead, but I would like to have seen the numbers more like about 17.5. So we're getting the equivalent of three drives. So number one, you get capacity. Again, this is RAID 0, RAID 0 from the BIOS. And we have a separate video on how to configure to do a Windows RAID that is bootable. And another question came up we'll do in another video about how fast can you install Windows on this Windows RAID. The question is not about how fast it installs to the drive. The question is how fast it installs from the media. And we're working on that. We got another staging we're going to do and see if we can speed that test up. So far for a USB 3.0 drive, we got up to I think a 200 megabyte. And we're going to try, yeah, we're going to try it with an Intel Optane drive on USB-C so we can increase that throughput. We'll see if it works. And you guys will see it. Y'all ask the questions, we try to do the testing and provide the answers. And I want to thank everybody for watching. By the way, this is Builder By. My name's Gil Boyd. I'm your host, and I love you guys. Hope you enjoy this. Wow, we got a BSOD. That's what I was expecting. Okay, that tells us a lot. That tells us that this cable will not work with PCI Express 4. We can try the other cable just for grins to see what's going to happen. I'm going to uh, take the screen off now. We were doing so good, too, but that's, that's what happens with a cable like that. So I don't know if we have exceeded the spec for the length of the cable, but I do know it's a big issue with PCI Express 4 versus PCI Express 3. Now, I'm going to go back and repeat this test by going into the BIOS and changing this to PCI Express 3, and we'll see if we can complete it. And right now the thing is going to berserk, so I'm going to have to uh, shut it down. We'll bring it up again, go back into the BIOS. All the fans are blowing and going. As soon as it posts, we'll go back in. We've got the fan running. And we can also see the uh, codes. Now, I have a PC speaker on. I prefer to hear that, but that's something you have to buy additionally. That's just old school. I'm used to the post codes. Okay, we got a post. As soon as I see something on screen, back into the BIOS. And we're going to change this to PCI Express 3.0. Okay, we're in the BIOS. We're going to go to Settings. We'll go to Miscellaneous. And we're looking at PCI Slot Configuration. We're going to double-click on that. And we're going to take that to Generation 3. So that'll put us at PCI Express Generation 3. We're going to press F10, Save, and it shows PCI Slot Configuration from Auto to Generation 3. Then we'll run the test again. Enter. Now we're going to run the test again. So System's booting. And this time we're not going to go into the BIOS and verify because we've set it at PCI Express 3. I can even tell a difference in the way the fans are running. 
So we'll go back into Windows. That'll be successful. We'll run the test again. We'll see how far we get. And I'll keep the camera on the test while it's running. I hear the post. Ah. So we see the computer coming up. So we're going to be back in Windows. Ah, I see the dial. Fantastic. And as Windows comes up, we'll go back in. We'll have a successful. And let's see if we can run the test again at PCI Express 3. The big deal is the cable. Okay, to getting ready to compare. Fortunately, that didn't happen. I want to interject at this point. When you do this with Windows after so many times of it going bonkers, like about three or four, then eventually we may have to uh, reinstall Windows. So I'm just saying, I'm doing this so you guys don't have to. Uh, will we try the other cable? Absolutely. I'm going to give it a shot. But let's see if we can run this successfully at PCI Express 3.0. We'll find out. So back into Windows. Crystal disk mark. And again, we're the same on an 8 terabyte partition, 8 gigabytes. And we are going to uh, run this and see if it will finish on PCI Express 3 and see if we do not get a BSOD. Now, if this doesn't work, then I'm going to figure out another way to get that camera down in there so we can uh, get a test on that for heat. I have another idea, but I thought this might be more interesting. So we'll see. Wow. You know, it's interesting. We take those drives from PCI Express 4, first generation drives, to PCI Express 3. So theoretically, 3,500 megabytes. So that'd be 36912 plus 1234. 15. And we're not doing 15. We're not doing, I would have hoped about 12.5. We're doing 10,000. So again, the equivalent of roughly three drives. So number one, you get capacity. Number two, you get speed, but because of the overhead, a little bit less. But again, this is about, let's see if we can get this to run successfully. Because the big deal are these cables. Now, what we'll have to do, and if you guys come across one, I'll keep talking while this runs. If you come across another cable that's PCI Express 4 compliant, or better still, PCI Express 5 compliant, then we can try that again. But until there's a better cable, for those of you that want to use a vertical GPU mount at PCI Express 4.0, with your PCI Express 4.0 video card, like an RTX whatever, that's PCI Express 4, you'll know what to expect. So for those of you that are interested in a GPU, I hope you get something out of this, but for those that are interested in the heat and speed test for the M.2 card, I hope you get even something more out of this. Sometimes the what if, you know, we go down one of those uh, rabbit holes to see what we can do, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But this is answering subscriber questions about the heat and speed test for the next video. But I thought, because of all the research we've done, on a vertical GPU mount that this would be more fascinating. It is what it is. Let's see if it'll finish. And the two cables, of course, being the same length, I'm curious if we'll get the same results out of the look versus the link up. A little better on the right, 12,700, 12,800, a little more progress. You know, it just goes to show everything matters, those little things, little details, like uh, a computer power supply matters or like uh, putting your computer on a UPS, or something as simple as an interconnect cable. These interconnect cables are a big deal, and i got to tell you, these cables are not cheap. They are really proud of them. But I've had them too long to turn them back because there's so much stuff going on. I mean, well, I'll just cut to the chase. we got three motherboards we're looking at. A WRX80, it's PCI Express 4.0, that'll do Thunderbolt 3, and two more motherboards that'll be Thunderbolt 4, one for AMD, yeah, the B550 Creator, and the other for Intel. And that goes back to the MFR formula. If you're building a machine for 10 cores or you're building a machine for 16 cores, it's all about rendering for content creation. So as we run this test to see what kind of results we get with four drives, 10,000 megabytes on the read and 12,820 megabytes on the right. Respectable. Not as good as I would like, but, you know, it is what it is. If the test will finish then we confirm one aspect of this. It's all about the interconnect. Now, my expectation, even though 3M is the one that seems to be making the most of these interconnects, I don't understand why DuPont isn't doing something with this, considering what they've done with HDMI. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, test is finished. We are done. 10,113 megabytes on the read, 12,820 megabytes on the write. That is a success. So far, so good, but we're PCI Express 3.0. We don't get our speed of PCI Express 4. We have to have a different cable. Let's try cable number two. We need to power down. And after we power down, we'll try this other cable. I don't know. My opinion would probably be 
the link up cable, but now I'm really curious if the look cable can achieve as good or better results. We'll see. So I got to power down, power off, power button shutting down. As soon as power cuts, turn off the power supply, press the power button again to drain, hold it, we're drained. Now we will unplug and we change out that cable. Well, as they say, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So our cable happens to be in this box. So we're going to unplug this cable. I like the way this set up. And yes, I remember it's PCI Express 3. I'll need to change that back because I want to test for PCI Express 4 first. So we got to pull this end out. I hate pulling by the cable, but there's no way to get hold of that from the bottom. That is well made. So I'll be sure and put the sleeve back on this. And because this is keyed, no, it's not. So I'll get the flat side to the back side to protect that cable. So, so much for that. Now for the look cable, back out of the bag. And we're gonna need the box. Will this cable be any better or any different? I have no idea. I had high hopes for the other one, but uh, didn't, quite, didn't quite work out. Sounded good on paper though. Okay, so this end that is bare will go on the motherboard. There's our notch, match up our notch. Because the way this cable is designed, it is much more fragile in pulling it out. So I'm going to have to be very particular and very careful. Something else I didn't notice till just now, but the way this is notched, this extra front for this key, so that's something else I've got I can use that I can get underneath, hopefully, and pry up on, because I don't want to pull on these cables the way these are uh, soldered in here. I'm just pointing that out. So the two cables are approximately the same length, just long enough. Okay. Bottom is mounted to the motherboard. Now we'll get the top mounted underneath. See our notch. Get our box back up here for this precarious mount. Because the way this cable mounts, it feels a little bit shorter. It looked the same, but as long as it'll stay put, okay. That looks pretty good. So again, we'll be able to see the fan and we'll be able to see the LED. So the next step is we uh, power up. So plug it in, turn on the power supply. Just double checking. Okay, now we're ready to turn it on. Okay, so far so good. Fan, LED readout, and as soon as I hear the postcode, then we'll go back into the BIOS, change that to PCI Express 4. First run the test on PCI Express 4, then run the test on PCI Express 3. And this is with the look cable. Okay, post, back into BIOS, and we are going to go to settings, miscellaneous, PCI Express slot configuration, Enter, and we will go back to Auto. Now we will press F10, Save Configuration Exit, yes. And let's see how far we get. So based on what we did a while ago, we've been in the BIOS, we've changed it back to PCI Express 4. We should be able to get into Windows successfully. I expect the same with this cable. The question is, once we get into Windows, can we run the test? Will it finish? I don't know. We're going to find out. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'll try to keep it short. I heard the post, so we're going up. I'll take it over as soon as I see something on screen. Yeah, we're booting. We're booting into Windows. We should see the dial. There's the dial. So Windows is coming up. And once we're in Windows, we'll give it a second, and then we'll run the test. We'll see how far we get. So again, we're on PCI Express 4. We're still using the same MNPC Tech mount, which is kind of precarious because it's not attached, but it does what we need for the test. And the specificity is we're using the Look riser cable, which is PCI Express 4.0. The question is, can we run this card with that cable? It did not work with the link up. The question is, will it work with this cable? We're going to find out. Oh, wow. Okay, Windows is updating our system. You know, Microsoft, you guys are great, but I wish you'd leave a computer alone. Uh, so we got to wait a little. That, okay, that was quick. Had a little update that had to occur. So Windows is going through a reboot. I didn't bother to check to see about updates, and I usually don't, but I keep stuff plugged in, so... Well, we've been doing our thing. I hear the post, so we're going back in. As soon as we get back into Windows, we'll bring it up, and then we'll, uh, we'll run our test. And again, the platform is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare, so we've got plenty of PCI Express resources. And what we're trying to do, get this up for the camera. I have some other ideas for the camera that I might be able to hold it down in there. The problem is I won't be able to see it as well as if it's up, so I can run the pointer. That's what I'm trying to achieve. Okay, working on updates. Based on experience with updates, I'm going to do one more reboot just to make sure everything is safe before we go run the test because my concern is if we run the test and we get a BSOD, it will uninstall the updates because it thinks something's not right. So I'm going to run one more reboot. 
Oh, wow. It's got some more updates it wants to do. So, I like watching paint dry or watching grass grow. Now, coming up in this next test while we're waiting, the first test we'll do for the speed and heat test, of course, will be with the Gigabyte RSM.2. Then we'll run the heat and speed test on the uh, both PCI Express 4.0. Then we'll run the test on the ASUS HyperQuad M.2, which will be their third card. We've already done tests on the first two cards. I won't go back and test heat on those cards uh, because being relevant to PCI Express 4, we're just going to test those two that are PCI Express 4. I heard the post. We're going back into Windows. Then after that test, we're probably going to go ahead and do something about ProArt unless uh, this thing with Thunderbolt 4 hits just right. We're still waiting on stuff for the WRX80. So there's a lot of things going on, a lot of things in play. But I always put questions, number one, being first, you guys. I want to thank you all for watching. I find all this stuff absolutely fascinating. By the time we get it figured out, it changes and off we go to do something else. Okay, Windows is back up. We did the reboots. We did the updates. And I rebooted one more time. So if we have a BSOD, it shouldn't try to uninstall the updates we did. You have to think about the chain of events, how one thing affects something else. Let's run the test. Okay, the system is settled down. Crystal Disk Mark. And for those that want to know, this is Crystal Disk Mark 8.0.1, the 64-bit version. Sometimes people ask for the distinction, and I want to make that distinction, even though there may be a newer version at this time, to keep this apples and apples with the other tests we've run on the other individual drives, I want to keep everything the same for some consistency. So for those that ask. Now again, an 8 gigabyte test file for an 8 terabyte partition. So let's run the test or PCI Express 4, and I'm going to keep that on screen and let's see what happens. It would be nice to run this test with second generation drives, but uh, I have no need for doing this. I'm not into RAID. You guys are. I show you how it works. I've done RAID a long time ago. And after the first time, uh, once I got over the, oh boy, this is exciting, I can do RAID part, then it was, uh, okay, now that I've done it, let's move on to other things. But I am showing this because you all want to see it. This is not a permanent installation. Because when this test and these series of tests are done, I'll go back to a single drive because there's some other stuff that we need to do in Windows, like Take a look at some of the other specs. Okay, 10,599. We're again, we're in the BIOS set at PCI Express 4.0. And these are four Sabre drives, which are capable of 5,000 megabytes because they are first generation PCI Express 4.0. If we had the second generation drives, each one would be good to 7,000. So if these are good for, and that's a lousy number, at 5,000, I should be getting, you know, like uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm getting half. That's the equivalent of two drives. That's, uh, that's terrible. But let's, uh, let's see what happens when we go from the uh, read to the write. Things might change. And the write is usually where we get the BSOD when that starts. And you have to remember all these specs the vendors quote. It's always about burst mode. It's not about actual throughput. Even this test, which is, I think, a pretty good test, so we have something generic. We're going to be doing some other tests where we use the video editors to show how long it takes to render a given set of files. The first set we'll probably do will be with the Puget System uh, files, which will be on DaVinci Resolve, and then we'll move on to some of the other tests. We may run one with some of our stuff, just as an example. Okay, 10,599 megabytes on the read. Not bad. I'm eager to see what happens on the right. That's a lot of data being pushed through that cable. Anybody want to take the odds? Is this going to work? Wow. Well, right there tells me a lot. The link up cable will not work at PCI Express 4, but the look cable will. And the look cable is designed for the look computer that's mini ITX. And that, wow, is wicked. We're still running. That's about what I'd expect. I'd have liked to have 17.5. So we've got a little above the equivalent of three drives. Not bad. Cool. The fact that it has not gone BSOD on us is amazing. So folks, if anybody's thinking about buying one of these cables, you don't want to buy the link up cable. You want to buy the look cable. I, I, I got to tell you, I expected the opposite to happen. So I'm impressed. The question is, is it the cable? Is it the manufacturing process? I don't know. But I was curious enough about the look to try it. And I'm glad we did. So I can tell you which one works and which one and what doesn't. Now, for those of you that want to use this on your GPU, there's your answer. 
the look cable. What about you? But I got something out of this already. One of those things that leaves me scratching my head. And no, I don't have the fancy test equipment to measure and see what we're doing with the frequency uh, on the, or the wavelength over the length of that cable. All I know is proof is in the doing and the doing is what we're seeing and results. If we get the results, that's what matters. So if you've got to do it now, that's the way to do it. But the question is, can you get the length of the cable you need to get that up where you want to put it? Because whatever bracket you're able to use, you're limited by the length of that cable. And from what I'm seeing right now, we're getting results with the look cable. And I just, wow. Now, will we be able to repeat that for the next video with two different cards? That's a good question. We're going to find out. But so far, we're in. In like Flint. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was, uh, that was a real eye-opener. I just, uh, wow. The test worked, so we don't need to run it for PCI Express 3. We've done PCI Express 4. We had success. That's what we wanted. Cool. And no matter what testing we do, results are what count. So uh, we looked at the Cooler Master bracket. We looked at the MNPC bracket. That's the bracket we used. We tried two different cables, and the cable we have in here right now, as you can see, these little kind of a, depending on how you see colors, that's either a, uh, a beautiful blue or it's a purple. But however you see that, that is a really interesting cable. I wasn't, I wasn't sure that was going to work, but it did, and it does, and we're set. So you all know the drill. I appreciate y'all watching. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. And next video is going to be Heat and Speed Test. And we'll look at the uh, Asus M.2 versus the uh, Gigabyte. We'll do the Gigabyte first. On to the next video.